Hello and welcome from Canada. In this episode, I'll be taking you on a road trip through the region of Newfoundland and Labrador. Are you ready? Let's explore. I made my way to the Grossmoor National Park and this is where I started my discovery here in Newfoundland. The Grossmoor National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site located on the west coast of Newfoundland. It is the second largest national park in Atlantic Canada and takes its name from Newfoundland's second highest mountain peak. My first stop have been the Tablelands, found between the towns of Trout River and Woody Point, where I went on a walk upon the Earth's mantle. After a short stop over in Woody Point, we drove to Rocky Harbor near the entrance to Bon Bay. This small town is the perfect base to explore the various sites the national park has to offer. I got up quite early for my trip to the Western Brook Pond, which has been without any doubts my personal highlight of the park. Like all fjords, it has once been a glacier. After the ice melted, the land rebounded and the fjord was cut off from the sea, resulting in the clearest freshwater one can imagine. It is also home to one of the highest waterfalls in eastern North America, the, believe it or not, Pissing Mare Falls. Then, with a few scenic stops, we were headed to Labrador and saw our first icebergs. Wish that I could stay. Wish for this moment to... So guys, we made our way over to Labrador and I'm now standing in front of Red Bay, which is the next UNESCO World Heritage Site on our list. Between 1550 and the early 17th century, Red Bay was a major Basque whaling area. The discovery of the Galeon San Juan proved the fact of the first transatlantic fishery and made Red Bay one of the most precious archaeological sites in the Americas. This time I stayed at the Point Amour Lighthouse, which is also the tallest lighthouse in Atlantic Canada. Of course I made sure the light was up all night long. My favorite spot in Labrador was our next destination, the island of Battle Harbor. Battle Harbor was for two centuries the economic and social center of the southeastern Labrador coast. Mercantile saltfish premises first established there in the 1770s developed into a thriving community that was known as the capital of Labrador. Nowadays, the facilities at Battle Harbor provide a commemoration of the life and society created here by Newfoundlanders and Labradorians during the 18th, 19th and 20th century. It is also the perfect place to go on an expedition to see whales and icebergs up close. The icebergs in this so-called Iceberg Alley make their way down south from the ice shield in Greenland and consist of 10,000 year old Arctic ice. I'm back in Newfoundland, this time in the north, because this is where we visit our third UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Viking village in Alonso Meadows. Discovered in 1960, Lonzo Meadows is the most famous site of a Norse or Viking settlement in North America outside Greenland. Dating to around the year 1000, Lonzo Meadows is the only site widely accepted as evidence of pre-Columbian transoceanic contact. When contact occurred here at Lonzo Meadows between the Norse and the Aboriginal peoples, it symbolizes the completion of the encirclement of the earth by humanity.
Before heading back to Europe, the last stop at Steadybrook was dedicated to kayaking and paddleboarding. After fjords, icebergs and whales, I'm finishing this road trip through Newfoundland and Labrador here at the Humber River. If you want to find out more about all the spots I visited, check out the link which you can find below this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for new travel videos every Thursday. See you soon! In the mist The Carretera Austral in rural Patagonia. Known as one of the most scenic roads 